So why, just a little testimony about that, why do you need to know what your mission is? And I'm just going to share because when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, I was incredibly confused about what I should be doing with my life. And I've done, you know, some really good things, I think. So, so I thought, maybe some people thought. I've been in different ministries, like Campus Crusade, and involved with evangelism and some churches and things. And uh, it was really great, but on the other hand, I felt like I was doing all these things just to try to please God. And it got so intense that I felt I was almost like a slave to God, having to do these things, doing what other people expected me to do, or what I thought God expected me to do to make Him happy. Didn't really understand grace yet, that God was already happy with me, and that I could just do these things as an overflow, um, like I know now. But at the time, I was all, all burdened and caught up into trying to prove what somebody else wanted, expected of me, or what I thought God expected. And I was just com completely getting burned out on this. Um, and I got really tired. In fact, I was in seminary. I was in grad school for seminary at the time. And I dropped out of seminary for six months because I was so burned out and getting kind of depressed. And I got to a point where I, after I went back and I finished school, I, um, I realized I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do in my life. I don't know who I am, what I am uniquely designed to do. I had an in inkling of it, but I didn't know exactly. So I ended up meeting with a, uh, uh, a kind of a career counselor who, does, who specializes in helping uh, Christians who are trying to figure this out. His name is Dan Webster, and he uh, does life planning sessions. He's from Holland, Michigan. So I ended up uh, meeting with him for 12 hours, and he took me through the life planning process, which is very similar to LifeBridge, which is uh, what Bridge Ministries is. So I went through life planning, and after uh, meeting with him for about 12 hours, I had this incredible sense of clarity. I knew what that was I was supposed to do. I knew who I was, how God designed me uniquely. And based on that, I knew what, what kind of uh, path I was supposed to walk from that point on. And I, I knew I, I was an integrator. I liked to integrate a lot of things as I was teaching and explaining things to others. Not just theology, though I love theology, but at the same time, practical living and spiritual life and even emotions and integrating all these things from the, even understanding your culture, all these things into living a full Christian life. I want to help people that really love God. And I wanted to teach. I learned these things about myself when I met with Dan. You know? And so what that did was it helped me to write a very clear mission statement. I knew what my heart motivations were. And I could write that statement. It wasn't just a statement on paper either. It was truly at the heart of, of the core of who I was. So when I lived that statement out, it was like this was me starting to activate what God had actually designed me to do or you know, always had built into me from when I was a kid. And I started walking that path and I built plans and goals around walking that path day by day and within six months or a year I was just leading a totally different life because now I was pursuing my PhD and I really didn't want to pursue a PhD before that just to, you know, just to get a degree and to show that I'm some intellectual guy and all this stuff and it made, didn't, really make, didn't really mean a lot to me. But I knew that I had to do that if I could want to teach and fulfill the mission that God had showed me. So I uh, applied for my PhD. I got accepted. The other thing I, I noticed that as I started the program, that a lot, most of the other students around me were very intense intellectually. And their whole thing was being intellectually perfect and having the right system and all this and that. And I just wasn't like that. You know, I was really different than most of the students. But since I had my mission statement, I didn't have to try to be like them, you know? I could just be myself, and I could just, you know, follow the path of my mission and not worry about what they were up to, you know? And I still wanted to teach theology, but I wanted to do it in a totally different way than I'd seen it taught before. And I also had a good model, like a good mentor. Uh, my pastor in Texas, uh, Pastor Jim, was modeling that. He was a really great theologian, and yet at the same time, he was very practical very into discipling people, especially men, in relationships. And I was like, wow, you know, I want to be a relational kind of professor, if I am a professor. So uh, I got that great mentoring, so you know, that's, the, that's the path I 
I, I discovered. And the neat thing about discovering your mission is that's, I think that's what's going to happen for you. And today we'll just write like a mini mission statement, not the full kind of thing that you would write if you went through LifeBridge. But it'll get you started and it'll start the discovery process for you of this is exactly how God's designed me to do something nobody else can do. And when you start walking that path, you know, day at a time, following and fulfilling your goals based on who God made you to be, there's just, it's just so, so incredible. You know, you feel like you're right in the palm of his hand doing exactly what he's designed you to do. And it's this amazing sense of, you know, I felt like I was a, a, an arrow now pointed toward the bullseye of how you called me to live. And I knew when I was getting off track, you know. And now I'm able to know when I'm off track, when I'm making the wrong decisions. I'm able to get back on track much more quickly. And so it's really exciting for me. And that's really kind of how uh, Bridge Ministries got started. So, my little story. I did, because I gave it this morning. No, of course, it of course was better this morning. Anyway, so that's not what's behind Bridge Ministries. And, um, but just talking about your mission statement and how you want to, how, what the Bible says about it. First thing is that, like this morning we had, uh, we had Julie, what's her last name? Julie H. Hendricks. Hendricks was there this morning, and she's a full-time missionary, and she's back on furlough. And, but you know what? She, as a missionary, she's not the primary missionary in her own life. And you think about the typical missionary, you know, they always have the right answer, and they're, but their clothes are always like 20 years behind the times, right? And they're great at support raising, and they're always off in some other distant country. But these are stereotypes of what a missionary is, and we always think of a missionary in those ways. But do we ever think of God as a missionary? And the truth is that scripture tells us that God is the primary missionary. So look, look at Ezekiel uh, 34, 16. Somebody read that for me so I don't have to do all the reading. I will keep the laws, bring back the scattered, mind of the broken, and strengthen the sick, declares the Lord. Ezekiel 34, 16. Thank you. So, you know, it's not... Uh, it's not us that is, that's doing this mission. Ultimately, it's him that's seeking the lost. We just get to participate in what he's doing. So that's pretty cool. Also, another principle about God's mission is that he's created, since he's created each of us in his image, we too are designed with a unique personal mission. He has a unique mission to reach the lost. He's given us a specific mission in, a lot, in line with that, each of us. And examples in scripture of how each of these different people were designed with a unique mission. You've got Adam. You see in Genesis 2, God put Adam in the garden to cultivate and keep it. So he was given the mission, the design to be a gardener. We see, uh, I love this guy's name in, in uh, Exodus, uh, where God said, I have given him, Bezalel, skill, ability, and knowledge, and all kinds of crafts. So Bezalel was designed, it says the Holy Spirit gave him that, uh, as a craftsman, designed to be a craftsman. And uh, I love that. In fact, I had a student come to my office uh, a couple weeks ago and said, I don't know what to do my paper on in class. You know, I had to do a paper on some, some passage in scripture. And I was like, what do you like to do? She's like, I'm an artist, I'm real creative and stuff. Like, Why don't you do your passage on Ezekiel, on, on Exodus 31 with Bezalel? So he did, it was a great paper. Uh, then you've got Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1.5 says, before you, uh, before you, Jeremiah, were born, I knew you and chose you to be a prophet. So God knew us before you were even born and knew what our mission was. What we're designed to do. And then finally, look at Paul. who says in uh, Acts 2.24, uh, life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. Oh, there's Karen. Uh, she's not going to mean calling back about babies. Okay, so uh, four people with four missions. Very clear, clear there in the scriptures. Uh, each of us has been given, a, by God, has been given a unique mission. Well, uh, and just like there's unique bridges all over the world, your unique mission can become a unique bridge for Christ in this world. It's like when I was in college, I studied civil engineering as a minor, and I was fascinated because all these bridges were unique. Even the ones that look similar had uniquenesses. So, um, and all the bridges around the world kind of represent that we all have a unique way of building a bridge between Christ and the world. 
We're called to be that bridge. Because he's, you know, he's not here anymore. So we're called to be his bridge. So there's the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. There's the top is the, uh, maybe that's the Golden Gate. I don't know. Uh, there's a Stone Bridge. Another one. That's unique bridges. And here's some guys that are really serious right now. They're very colorful, but they're very serious. And I don't know what they're about to do, but, um, but they do tell us, though, that it's time to circle up. And as you look at them, <laughs> these colorful guys need an icebreaker. You know, like, so. <laughs> All right, icebreaker. Um,